The judgment has set, the books have been opened. How shall we stand in that great day? Hello dear viewer, I'm Leila Awino and I'd like to welcome you to Camp Meeting 2024, Salvation Simplified. And this week has been a real good blessing. It's not over yet, but this is for all of you viewers who perhaps have not caught time to capture the camp meeting. Maybe you've been caught up at work or have various um, commitments throughout the week. So we'd like to include you and make you part of us who've been blessed to attend this camp meeting. Perhaps you've only been available for the live streams. Now outside, we've had a lot of things that have been happening and we'd like you to know. So I've got some insights from some certain elders, pastors, guests, even children. They have so much to tell you about what they've experienced throughout this week. Our work is begun with those who are sleeping. Soon will the living he be tried. Out of the books of God's remembrance, His decision to abide. How shall we stand in that great day? How shall we stand in that great day? My name is Tiffany Janelle Riaga and I'm here to extend an invitation and welcome you to New Life Church Camp Meeting. You may be asking yourself, what is Camp Meeting all about or why is it important? Well, God himself initiated Camp Meeting in the Old Testament. In the book of Leviticus chapter 23 from verse 33 to 37, the Lord instructed the children of Israel to gather together once a year for one week and have a meeting. It was known as the week of tabernacle and the people rested from all their work to meet with God. They also brought offerings of thanksgiving and praised him for his goodness. For starters, I was privileged to talk to one of our pastors here at New Life SDA Church, Pastor Ezra Nanuti, who explained the importance of camp meeting both back then when the Israelites used to call it Feast of the Tabernacle in the book of Leviticus and right now in our daily lives as Christians. Biblically, the year ends in the month of August. So actually we are ending this particular year and we end it actually in a style where we come together and have the Feast of the Tabernacle which is known as the Camp Meetings. So they used to come to just fellowship, number one. They used to come and worship God. Worshiping God with their families, which was, which was very important. And besides coming, they used to come with offering. Because, you know, when God has done something tremendous in your life, it was an opportunity of coming to Him and say, thank you, God, for, for your guidance. Thank you because of your providence. So then having seen a brief summary of the importance of our camp meeting, then this, you know, uh, it give, it gives us all the reasons to us why we should come also before the presence of the Lord. Because when they came in, as the Bible says, they did not come empty-handed. And as they did not come empty-handed, when they were leaving the car meeting, they did not leave empty-handed. Meaning, they used to come in with something and they go out with something. What is this? They used to go out with a blessing. In the Adventist Church, we've been blessed with so much truth. Many people tend to call us biblical soldiers, but I'm glad to say that that's not the only truth we've been blessed with, with our, by our God. We are also blessed with nutritional truth and how to take care of our health as well. So why miss out on it? Joining me in just a bit is one of our literature evangelists who will tell us about her books that she brought for us during this evangelistic campaign and you cannot imagine her favorite book. Hello, my name is Brenda Moenga. I am a literature evangelist and I 
promote books. With me here is a book called Cancer. It's a book that helps people to understand all about cancer, different types of cancer, prevent and control the cancer that we have in our bodies. Basically, every, each and every one of us has cancer cells in their body. But whatever we are doing is what multiplies the cancer cells or what destroys the cancer cells. So get your copy today and uh, get to know about cancer and live a healthy lifestyle. Thank you. My name is Jared Manyara. Where I'm standing right now is the children's wing, where we normally have our children take their lessons on Sabbath and on special occasions like our meeting. Uh, we value our children so much that we know that without them, there is no church tomorrow, when most of us will be exiting. I want to thank God for this year's camp meeting, Salvation Simplified, the sanctuary message and services. It is amazing. I'm just urging everyone to be part and parcel of this camp meeting. We have programs lined up and something very interesting. This year, we have very special programs, especially for the children. We are introducing to every aspect of their spirituality and their physical well-being. Our next class is personal hygiene. What do you understand by personal hygiene? Yes, Amy. Sorry? Own hygiene. By own hygiene you mean? Keeping yourself clean, eh? Yes, Kemi? Cleanness of yourself. Both of you are correct, eh? Which body part should we keep clean? One by one. Mandela? When cooking, you should keep your hands clean. Next. How many times should we clean our bodies? Last two, twice a day. Let him explain. Why should girls clean themselves twice a day? <laughs> How many times should we bathe in a day? Okay. When it's cold like now, we are in July, August. How many times should we shower? Okay. We should shower every day. Or when we are visibly that you can shower in the morning, then you go to the shamba, you are very dirty. Or you go play football, you are very dirty. You have to come back and shower again. The children are a heart of the family. In our church family, we cannot continue the camp meeting without them. Today I was privileged to attend one of the children's classes where they were learning about prayer and God's love with his big red heart. So, take a look. Then, no, like this, you put your hand here and draw the hand on the paper, okay? Yes. Are you seeing this? Yes. When you draw your hand on the paper, don't draw this side. Just reach here. So you start from here, go round, round, round until you finish here, okay? And then you take your scissors. Kitchen, 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 kitchen. Can I have a scissor I cut for them? So you take this big then you cut 
We are only doing kitch, 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 kitch. So what did you say the heart is for? What does the heart do? It pumps blood. It it pumps blood so that you can have enough love for everybody. Okay. So you are making the praying hands of love, right? Yes. The praying hands of what? Love. Of love. And who makes us love one another? God. God. And if God loves us, what do you do? John 14:14 14, 14 says that if you love me, you do what? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. So these hands of love will make you keep God's commandments and be his obedient child, right? Right, boys and girls? Good. Now you're all good boys and girls. If you love one another. And then see here, boys. This end part you'll cut from here. Make it a curve, a nice curve down, a nice curve down, and then you go deep inside here. And voila. <laughs> what is that? My experience with the kids today reminded me about how I used to enjoy my craft lessons when I was really little and I just miss it back then and I hope by this video you can also connect it with your childhood and enjoy it as much as I did. Voila! So these are, these are your hands. You pray with your hands like this, right? Hold this. These are our hands when you're praying. When you open them, we open with the love for everybody, okay? So you close your hands when you're praying, then you open them. But now when you open them, something good is inside your hands. Love. So we will paste love inside here. See this, see this, see this. You take glue. You take, you take glue. You don't touch glue, just take glue. Dip the edge on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the glue, then put inside here. Hold this. You see, it will it will stick. So, it is a praying hands of love. Is it good? Can you do this? I Hello, my name is Angel. I am seven years old. I am in builder's class. Today we learned about God's love. When we pray, we get, we pray, and we open our hands, we get God's love. So God is always there, and he loves you no matter what happened to you. In Jesus' name, amen. One lady had a baby in a bus, and uh, they were both reading a book. And one passenger was so amazed at how the mother and the child were reading a book. And um, he asked the mother, how did you get how did you get your child to read the book and the mother was just said i actually read the book so he copies what i'm doing the bible story is a volume of 10 books that has te that has all the stories in the bible from genesis to revelation it's a good book to do devotion with your entire family so get grab your copies today so i want to encourage parents to purchase the books, read with the children, it helps them in bonding. We also have healthy books, get a copy, it will help you prevent a number of diseases and uh, you will lead a healthy lifestyle. May God bless you all. Hi, my name is Esther Pendo and I'm in PowerPoint class. Today, we learned about the solution of sin, which is confession in Christ Jesus. In health, we learned about hygiene, keeping our bodies clean, and our environments. I had much fun, and I know you will too. Come and join us as we have more fun learning about Jesus our Lord. Thank you.
If you've been following Kinley during our live streams, we've been running some prayer lines that you could call and if at all you're in need for prayers and the people dedicated for that purpose alone to help you pray for whatever you're in need for. And personally, I think I'm a living testimony. I don't know if it's their prayers that worked or my prayers or the conjoined effort. So I got to visit the prayer room and got to speak with one of the prayer warriors, teacher Betty Gabantu, who was who is one of the prayer warriors who offers prayers for all of you who are in need for prayers. Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Betty Gabantu, a member, uh, one of the members in the prayer council. Um, we want to thank God for the privilege of prayer. Prayer is a privilege. That is one thing we need to know because that is the only way we can commune with God. We pray and um, we pray not only for ourselves but we pray for everyone that needs prayer. And we know that just during this camp meeting we know that so many people have needs. Some people are feeling like you know all is gone, you feel like all is lost. But we want to encourage you that there is hope. When you pray, God answers prayers. We have seen so many miracles that God has been with us, has answered our prayers, he has answered people's prayers. Those who call in with the numbers that you see always on the screen, just call that number and get someone to talk to. Don't die alone, you know, there are people who can hold you in prayer. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God like you talk to a friend. You know, prayer does not bring God down to us, but it takes us up to him. It elevates us to him. So when you pray, you are kept closer to God because that is the only way you can communicate to God. So I just encourage everyone to really embrace prayer because prayer is for each one of us. If you don't pray, then it means you don't commune with God. But also, don't only pray because, again, when you talk to someone, you have also to listen to him. And that is where now the word of God comes in. You can't pray without the word of God. So anytime you pray, you use scripture. You pray and read also the word of God. So even Jesus, remember when he was tempted, he used the word. He said it's written. So every time we pray, we have also to remember to study the word of God. And through the word of God, you are able to listen to God. Because if I don't read the word of God, then I will only talk to myself. But I won't get the response from God. So prayer, reading the word of God have to go hand in hand. So I just encourage everyone who really wants to learn what prayer is, that we may be able, um, uh, you may be able to call the numbers you see there. We are here, we are variable, it's not me alone. Yeah, I want to encourage those who are here physically. You came to New Life Church and you are down there in the church and you have this baggage and you really want to release it. You want someone to pray with. We have a prayer room upstairs where the children classes are. You can always come and you'll find someone to pray with. And also, uh, I'm encouraging uh, people to write their prayer request. If you're not able to come upstairs where the prayer room is, just write your prayer request. We have boxes in every corner where you can drop your prayer request and we get them and then we pray for them. Like these are prayer requests that are always dropped in the boxes. Uh, people write them and we come and pray over them. So here we are praying for your prayer request. So don't hesitate dropping your prayer request in that box. It's very important so that someone can hold you in prayer. God bless you. Um, my name is Edward Omolo a member of uh, New Life SDA Church. I am a deacon and I also sing with the Redemption Singers. Uh, the camp meeting uh, this year, 2024, which is uh, Salvation Simplified, has been a blessing to me as a person. And uh, the teachings have really encouraged me as a person to continue focusing on God and to maintain being at the feet of Jesus. I want to appreciate our speakers, especially our main speaker who have been talking about the laws of God that even as we enjoy the camp meeting, 
that we may follow Christ and Christ and Christ alone by following his word and the Bible and the Bible alone. That even as we wait for Christ's second coming, we may be found uh, worthy to be picked by Christ because he's coming again. I'm here with my usual yes, problems. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes I uh, do what you do. Yeah. So I did this. this. Thank you. How oh, do I plug it for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's fine? Yes. Right. So you try, just try to converse so that we can see if it's picking the sound. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody, my name is Donna and I am glad that we are here with us today I'm here because I just want to testify of how much God has been good it's been three days at our camp meeting here at New Life and I'm enjoying it so far uh, the messages have been so enriched and I've been part of the the last songs that we've been singing at the end of the sermon and let me tell you something they are blessing the messages are so intertwined with the songs and I'm really blessed and I hope you're blessed Please come on for these other remaining days. I hope you'll be blessed. Hello everybody. This is Dr. Laron Grosvenor, lead pastor of the Alpha Church in Austin, Texas. I am excited to be coming to you uh, right here on the campus of New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Nairobi, Kenya. It is camp meeting and we are having an amazing time here. Uh, the Lord is meeting us, the Lord is blessing us, the Lord is teaching us and feeding us through word, through worship, through song and through great food. Listen, we have had such an amazing time here in Nairobi, Kenya. This is one of my favorite places in the world. Some of you are watching from far away and you are not here. Uh, while you are missing out by not being here, we are glad that you're able to tune in online. And we trust that the same God that is visiting us here on the campus is the same God that is visiting you in your home or at your workplace. Listen, I hope I can meet you soon. If ever you're in the Austin, Texas area, Come visit us at the Alpha Seventh-day Adventist Church where we are building a caring Christian community one person at a time. Camp Meeting 2024, right here. Salvation Simplified. Salvation Simplified. Camp Meeting 2024. And there you have it, dear viewer, from our guest speaker, Pastor Lawrence Grovner, who you've been hearing a lot from the pulpit and now you've got a chance to hear from him outside the pulpit. I hope you've been blessed over the past few days by various things that have been happening and the activities that have been happening here at New Life SDA Church. I also hope that you find time to join us here physically and be part of this amazing and wonderful experience and be blessed as many of us have been this far. I also extend a warm welcome to you. If at all maybe you're tied up during the week, come join us on Sabbath and be blessed and share with us the blessings that we've had all throughout the week to crown it all up with God's wonderful love. My name is Leila Awino. See you sometime. Shall we be found before?